good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and a user, Victoria, requested a battleship. So, my friends, let's get cracking. So, my friends, first things first, let's hit create new design. Let's rename our file so we can keep track of it. This will be battleship. And, of course, I like to put my initials after it just because it keeps track of whose is whose. The start of our ship is going to be created with an all shape. There are many awesome shape generators out here. We need to go to page 13 to find an amazing one called the Boat Hull. When you bring it in, we are going to change a few numbers. You can, of course, adjust these like crazy, but these are what I'm choosing. I want a stern length of 20 so that it's a little more rounded. I want a mid length of 125 so we've got a lot of ship to play with. I'm going to keep the bow length, and then I want you to make the beam 40, and I want you to make the depth 25. That is going to be our battleship's hull. Now I want you to take that and do duplicate, which is also control D, move that one to the side, and then I want you to duplicate again and lift this one up five millimeters. Make it a hole, and then group those two shapes and check it out. You have just instantly cut out your boat's hull. How sweet is that? I'm not going to put anything in there in this project, but at least now we've got the ability. We need to make a deck and we're going to do that over here. Let's go back to basic shapes. Let's find the hole box. Let's set it past the left edge, stretch it all the way across. Grab that black handle that's underneath, stretch it way past the front. Notice I made mine 20 high. I'm going to do control D. I'm going to raise the new one up. And then so I get the exact right thickness, I'm going to hit the work plane and I'm going to set it on this cube. I'm going to take this one and hit D to drop. And then I'm going to do control up, one, two. So my deck is going to be two millimeters thick. Grab those three shapes. Notice that selection rectangle touched all three. And when we hit group, we have just made a perfectly sized hull. I'm going to put the work plane back to the ground. So I just click work plane, click the blue edge, grab those two shapes, double check that it says two, and hit align. And then I want to align it to the boat. So if I click the boat, bam, there's my middle button. And it is exactly where I want, but notice the line shows up. Here's how we fix that. If we change this to 0.25, if we do control up, it goes up a half a millimeter and all of a sudden those lines are gone and we've got a deck to build our ship on. Before we go any further, let's take a look at battleship images. When we hit this, it shows us that battleships quite often have a couple of guns and a sweet tower. You can see here this tower's got all kinds of fancy shapes. Of course, there are lots of other things on this, but we're going to make sure we have the two guns and the central tower. You can go back and forth to whatever pictures you want, but that's what my plan is. All right, let's build the command center. Let's put a work plane so we're dropping the command center here. Let's build it with a polygon. I want to use a funky five-sided shape. And then I want to make sure that that's aimed to the front. So I'm going to rotate it 22 and a half degrees, and boom, that'll be my control tower. I'm going to move it back wherever I want. I am going to align it by clicking the ship and clicking that middle button. Now I'm going to use a trick. Right now it's 18 point something on each side. I'm going to do Alt Shift and I'm going to stretch it up by holding Alt Shift. See how it stays around the middle? I'm going to get that to the size I like. Mine's going to be 25 it looks like. Now people can walk around it, but I've also got a sweet command center. All right, I'm going to take this height from 25 and I'm going to shrink it to 10. Friends, I want my command and control center to have two different levels. So what I'm going to do is put my work plane up here. And then I'm going to click on that bottom one and do control D. And when I hit the letter D, it drops to that next level. I'm going to then click on it and hold down Alt and Shift and make it a little smaller. Notice it raises it up. So I'm going to just hit D and drop it down. Now I want to hollow this out as well, so I'm going to do Control D again. I'm going to hold down 
Alt and Shift. And I'm going to make that 7.6 even smaller. And then watch this. If we click on the outside one and we make it a solid but transparent, we can see that inside one with its levels and everything like that. We're going to hide this one and we're going to make this one a whole. We're going to do show and when we group those two pieces, it is hollow inside. I want to cut in windows so that they can see out. We're going to do that by putting the work plane on the front, bringing out another of those hole boxes. I'm going to just use these rectangles to get it to the size I want so that people can see out. But I do want to have a level that they can stand so it's not a window that shows everything. I can shrink this down a lot, but then I'm going to push it in. Need to make it skinnier on this side. And that I like. So now to make two of these, I'm going to check the measurements. See how that's 9 by going to be 3. So then I just go over here, once again do the work plane, bring out my rectangle. But this time I know that number is 9. This number is 3. I'm going to hold down shift and click on this shape. And when I do a line, I'm going to say I want them both to be the same level this way. Now, because I've got the work plane here, I can just use the arrows. Notice I hit Control Z to undo that. I'm clicking on this shape, and now I can just use the arrows to push it where I want. Let's look at it from a top corner. Same as last time, we can shrink it down, but then push it in so that it cuts. Let's grab those three shapes. And when we group them, we have now got windows in to our battleship control center. Turn off transparency, and it looks pretty cool, but I want another one of those. So I'm going to set my work plane on top. I'm going to do control D again, and this time when I hit drop, boom, we have got a two level command center. Let's set the work plane back down on the bottom. Take a look at our shape. I don't want that line there. I can get rid of it by just taking those two shapes. Notice you got to have the right angle to get just two. And when you group them, that line is gone. Sweet. I'm going to click on those two pieces, selecting them both while holding shift. And I'm going to group them. I'm going to take this, and I've got it all put together, but I want it to be a little larger. So once again, it's going to be alt and shift. And I'm going to just stretch it till I'm really happy. And then I'm going to use the arrow keys to pull it forward a little bit. I'm going to switch to that one millimeter grid as I get it adjusted just the way I want. All right, friends, let's add the amazing turrets. Once again, bring out your work plane, bring out a cylinder. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to shrink this until it says size 14. If yours doesn't say 14, once again, you can just type it in. I want to make one of these seven. This will be the turret that's back in the back. I'm going to do control D and pull the other one forward and I'm going to make it three high. That way they're stacked and they don't run into each other. Of course we need to align them so I'm going to do center. Got to scroll out so I can see that center and then boom they are all aligned. Friends let's add the top to our guns and we're going to use something sweet in the all shapes to do that. Please click and go all the way to page number 11. When you get to 11, find the one called the octagon, and let's drop it on top. So we're going to do work plane, octagon, and boom. This octagon is pretty sweet, but it's a little bigger than I want. I'm going to tell you to make that one 16. I'm going to tell you to make this one 14. And when you do that, it's got a nice slope for attaching those, but I want to change the height to 4. So it's just a little steeper. Let's actually try 12. So that's going to be our turret. Now we need these two pieces aligned. So we're going to do shift select, click align, and then we want to align to the center piece, center, center. So that's good. I'm going to duplicate this, control D. I'm going to move it close to the other one, and then I'm going to set the work plane to that level and hit D to drop it. Now, because of the way these rotate and align, we need to pick where our guns are going to be aimed first. 
So I'm going to turn this one so it's aimed that way. Notice it rotates around its middle. And I'm going to rotate this one this way. So I'm going to shoot here and there. I'm going to do shift select so those two items are selected. And once again, I'm going to use the orange one to do its middle and middle. Now that would have been easier to see from up here on the corner, but I've been doing this for a while, so I don't necessarily worry about it so much. I'm going to make sure these two are selected and aligned, even though I think I already did it. Boom, boom, I can already see they are. All right, so let's add some turrets to our sweet battle stations. First, I'm going to click on the work plane in this flat place. Let's go back to basic shapes and find the tube. When you bring the tube out, let's make it totally round. And then I want you to type 1.5 and I want you to type 0.5. And you have just made a sweet cannon. I'm going to change that to 14 so it's sticking out there a ways. And then I'm going to nudge it to the left. And then I'm going to do control D, nudge it over and control D. If you don't touch anything, those three things all have the same movements. Let's grab those three and group them, and let's make them a gray. I'm going to make the bottom piece a gray. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Once again, work plane on that edge, bring out my tube, make the sides round. 1.5, 0.5. Pick that length. I think I chose 14. Nudge it so I get it where I want. So I'm going to do 0.1 this time so it can be more perfect. Then I want to stick it in the cannon a little bit. And if I do Control D, use the arrow key to nudge across. Do not touch anything else and do Control D again. All three of those are arranged the exact same sticks in there a little goofy but you know what for this project I'm happy with that so once again I'm gonna change my colors where's my gray I think I chose that one and the bottom one choose that one again choose that one and we've got pretty sweet battleship cannons all right friends let's move to the back of our ship and make a sweet helicopter pad once again work plane bring out a cylinder. I'm going to make it 0.25 thick. And I'm going to make it a gray. See if I can make it a different gray than the ship. I like that. It's dark. And then on top of that shape, let's put a piece of text. We do need to rotate it 90 degrees. Remember, if you move out, it's one degree. If you stay close to the shape, you can use these tick marks to get the H where you want it. We want to use SANS because that looks more like a helicopter H. Backspace, capital H, and boom, you've got the start of a helicopter landing pad. We just need to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to change this back to size 1. I'm going to hold down shift so it shrinks a little smaller than my circle. And I'm going to make it real skinny. Let's do 0.5. And I want to make it a real light gray so that helicopter pilots can see it easily. Let's hold down shift and select the circle and select the H and do a line. Choose the circle, middle, middle, and of course, group them. We don't want it to be one color, we want it to be multicolor, and bam, we've got a place for a helicopter to land. Let's add some cool antennas and sensors up here. Hit work plane, and first let's grab the cylinder to make a post. Hold down shift and shrink it. Type the number one so you've got a skinny post. Zoom in with that sweet fit view and then change the height from one to say 10. I'm gonna have three of these posts. I'm gonna make them a dark gray. And I'm gonna do control D and just drag these wherever I want so that I've got my three posts for my sensors. I'll even make one a different height than the other. So it's got some variation. And then check out the cool sensors that we can create. These are all make-believe, but they are quite fun. So under Featured, you should always be looking at all the amazing things you have available. On page 4, I'm going to use these sweet radial fins. 
when you bring them in. I'm going to do that Alt Shift to shrink them. I'm going to make it skinny. And then if I put this right here, I have got some sort of sensor. I don't know what it does, but it's mine and I like it. When I click on the two pieces, I can hit a line, choose the pole, and if I hit middle, middle, it is arranged. I'm gonna just nudge it so that it's exactly where I want. And then if I group those two, I've just made sensor one. All right, before I group them, I'm gonna make this a different grade just so it looks a little bit cool. And now I can grab those two pieces. See how it says three? I'm gonna use shift select. So I've only got the two I want. And boom, sensor number one is created. Let's just turn on multicolor so it keeps that cool style. On this same page, I'm gonna use this funky surface. So let's bring the surface out. I'm gonna stand it up. And then I'm gonna hold down shift so it shrinks to the size I want. And then I'm gonna put this one on this tower right here. I'm gonna hold down shift, select that tower. And when I do a line, I wanna pick the tower and I want it to be on the top. I'm gonna zoom in so I can see better. And I want it to be in the middle and the middle. I don't know what that sensor does, but I like it. I'm gonna nudge it one forward so it's in front. I think I'm gonna do Control D. I'm gonna put one in the back as well, but I'm gonna use the sweet mirror command so it's looking the other way. Let's make them a gray as well. I'm gonna make these almost black or maybe completely black. Change my grid so they can connect a little bit better. Solidly connected, solidly connected, and let's group. Like those dots in the middle. Not necessarily planned, but I think it looks pretty sweet. Had too many pieces, so I'm going to ungroup them, and I'm going to do that shift click again. One, two, three shapes, group. And now they are separate, and I can do multicolor so they look cool as well. Let's find our last piece of equipment. I'm going to switch to page five. Ooh, love the facet sphere. That's going to be sweet. Let's change the work plane to the top of that post. Bring out the facet sphere. It is huge, but I'm going to simply hold shift and shrink it down to the size that I think is awesome. I'm going to do shift select so that those two pieces are selected. Choose a line, pick the pole, zoom so I can see better. And I want the middle of the pole and the middle of the pole. See how that dot turns red? And then you can push it down so it's totally attached. Pick a different color. I'm going to go with that gray. I'm going to change that post to be a different color just for giggles. And let's group those two pieces. Bam. And turn on my multicolor. All right. I think that's too high. So I'm going to just shrink it like this. And you know what? I like that dome shape even better. That's one of the fun things is as you play, you can just create cooler things with simple adjustments. All right, friends, let's add some cool things to our deck. I'm going to click on the deck, and let's look at page six. Ooh, I like this multi-point cylinder. There are tons of settings you can adjust, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to take it, flip it over, and I'm going to drop it on my deck. There's a D for drop, and I want two of them, so I'm going to do Control D. I'm going to move it across. Let's change to point one so it moves faster as I use the arrow keys. And then when I've got those two shapes, do I know what they do? Nope. But I think they're sweet. I'm going to group them. I'm going to shift click the ship, choose a line, and then get them centered. Nice. Let's see what other cool things we can add. Ooh, this puller looks like it belongs on the front and back of a ship. I'm going to bring that dude in, hold shift, shrink him down so he'd be the size I want. I'm going to do size 6, use my arrow keys to nudge it exactly where I want it, control D, move his partner over to the other side, and then I'm going to do the same thing up in the front. Once again, puller, hold down shift and shrink, remember we went to size 6, <laughs> that was luck, I was going to just type it again, and I want these right here, control D, 
and move one to the other side. Now there are many other cool things you can add. These are just things I'm spotting as we play, as we learn also about all these cool things in the all shapes. Right now let's add our propellers using another amazing all shape. It's on the third page and it's called the Pro Gear. I'm gonna set the work plane back to the ground, bring out that Pro Gear, and I'm gonna stand it up by looking at it from a corner and zooming to the fit view so we can rotate it 90 degrees. Hit D to drop it to the right height and then we are gonna change a few numbers. The first thing we're gonna do is make this size three. The second thing we're gonna do is make the tooth base height four. So what it does is stretch those out and then this is the cool one. Take your helical angle and make it 35. Boom, instant propellers. Would they really work on a ship? Probably not. But are they cool for this project? Heck yeah. I'm gonna turn them gray. I'm gonna move it over here to the bottom of my ship. We need to quickly add a drive shaft. So from this corner, I'm gonna simply do work plane, aim at that shape, go back to the basic shapes, find a cylinder, and I'm gonna drop it on there. Let's hold down shift and shrink it to size two. Zoom in the actual size with the fit view. And then we can move this into place using the arrow keys. Or I'm going to do shift, select, and align. And I'm going to choose middle and middle. With that aligned, I'm now going to pull it in so it connects to my ship. Shift click to group those two choose the gray color I want. I'm going to do control down so it's exactly where I want it on the ship and do control D and move its partner to the other side. You can do shift click to group those and then with them grouped you can click on your ship and do a line and make sure that it's aligned to the middle. I'm going to click the ship so it picks that and then boom we have got a prop driven battleship. Alrighty friends, this has been pretty intense, but I'm gonna add one more cool piece. I'm gonna click on the face of it with the work plane and let's go to scribble. And I wanna make a scribble captain. He is just gonna have his little scribble head. He's gonna have a hand that's waving. He's gonna have his other hand just by his side, do his scribble body. To get his eyes, I'm going to use the erase tool, pop, pop, and let's put him in our scribble battleship. So notice he is way too large. What we're going to do is hold down shift, and we're just going to shrink him till he's the right size to be on our ship. I'm going to make him skinny, and then I'm going to push him into the ship so he's actually inside. Alrighty, friends, so there's my little scribble dude, and you know what? Let's also add a astrobot from the characters. Where is he at? There he is. So I'm going to set the work plane inside our battleship so that way there's a captain and an astrobot. Notice astrobot is crazy huge. If we do fit to you, we can then hold shift and shrink him down to the size that would fit. Once again, fit view. I'm going to hold shift and shrink him a little bit more. Now we can find his rotation handle and turn him. And we've got Astrobot. I'll do shift to make him one bigger. And Scribble Dude. Friends, there is so much room for you to make this as awesome as you want. It is a crazy big project, but it has all the skills you need to start mastering Tinkercad. If you make something awesome, please take time to take a screenshot or take a picture with your phone. Share it with me at HLModTech on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And of course, friends, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or a suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HLModTech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.